The Mecklenburg County election debates are a service of WTVI, Mecklenburg County, and the League of Women Voters of Charlotte Mecklenburg. The views and opinions expressed in these debates are those of the candidates and do not necessarily represent the views of WTVI, its management, Mecklenburg County, or the League of Women Voters. PBS Charlotte and the League of Women Voters present Election Debate 2016. Hi, I'm Danielle Koser with PBS Charlotte. Welcome to the 2016 general election debate sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Charlotte Mecklenburg. During the next 20 minutes, you'll hear from the five candidates in the race for Mecklenburg County Soil and Water Conservation District Supervisor, which is a nonpartisan race. In this race, you may only vote for one candidate. Questions for today's debate were provided by the League of Women Voters of Charlotte Mecklenburg. The candidates were not given the questions in advance. I'll call on, on the candidates in random order, and they'll each have 30 seconds or one minute to respond to the question. Now, if you'd like to challenge an opponent, just raise up your yellow challenge card. You'll have 30 seconds to respond to each candidate. And each candidate has three challenges during this debate. You'll be allowed to make a 30-second closing statement. Now, let's meet the candidates for Mecklenburg County Soil and Water Conservation District Supervisor. They are Bonnie Brown. Eric Erickson, Doug Hanks, Brad Johnson, and Lisa Rudisell. And we'll get right started for, or we'll get right into this rather. For this first question, you'll each have 30 seconds to respond. The question is, in your record as a public official or other experience, what demonstrates your ability to be an effective district supervisor? This might include career or community service. Be specific about its relevance to this office. We'll start with you, Mr. Brown. Well, over the last year, um, I've been working with environmentalists such as the Greenpeace, and I'm an active member of the Sierra Club, so I've come to learn a lot of uh, Charlotte's most facing issues, so I think that that is um, a good track record as far as being a first candidate, uh, first time election. Um, and uh, other organizations that I work with as far as leadership, I am the first vice president of the Young uh, Mecklenburg Democrats of Mecklenburg County, and I'm also on the Arts and Science Advisory um, Board as well. So. I think I have a few organizations under my belt that I've been able to achieve this goal. Mr. Erickson? Yes, um, my, um, I'm a member of the, the Charlotte Public Tree Fund. I also, um, I am a police officer and a probation officer, uh, and I have a degree in organizational change, leadership, and management. Um, I have constantly um, been concerned about the, the water and the land of this, of this county and with my uh, leadership skills with being a police officer and having a degree in um, leadership organization change management, that puts me a great fit for this, uh, this county, with this board. Mr. Hanks? Well, for the past 21 years, I have acted as the chief conservation officer on the only eastern redwood forest in America. It's the only wild dawn redwood forest outside of China and I've been used to dealing with critically endangered species. This will be the Dawn Redwood. Now, with soil and water, there's really nothing more endangered as a species right now than clean drinking water. And I would like to take my experience in dealing with ecology and the environment and bring that to this office here in Mecklenburg County. I think 21 years being out in the field is more than enough. Mr. Johnson. I've been in the seat for a little over three years now, and so I think I've proven track record uh, with both being uh, the treasurer right now of the board and also the main uh, overseer of our one employee. But I think actually more important than that is uh, the fact that I have technical expertise in this. So I'm a professor of geology at Davidson College. I work with soil and water uh, in my everyday life. Um, and so I'm actually able to field questions from people who call me at almost any point, uh, including our district employee. So when our district employee calls me with logistical questions on surveying, I'm able to answer those. Ms. Rudisell? I'm a native of Charlotte. My family came here actually in 1750 to Mecklenburg County area. Um, I have deep concern for our um, heritage here, for conservation of our natural resources. Um, my uncle was a head of the Charlotte Water Department um, for many, many years and has a treatment plan named in his honor. Um, I brought a, a sample of um, water from the Catawba River this morning, so one of my major concerns is our water drinking 
uh, system here for the million people that we have to provide for now. Uh, you can see the difference perhaps um, between the water that's in the bottle and this water. I just wanted to show you that um, the, the Catawba River is a major concern. Thank you, Ms. Rudiso. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. You'll each have 30 seconds to respond. The question is, what do you believe are the three most important issues facing Mecklenburg soil and water district? And we'll start with you, Mr. Brown. Um, the three most important issues that I see, um, if you check out my website, vinybrown.com, I lay out my platform. One is community awareness. I think the board, a lot of people doesn't, a lot of people don't understand what this board does. And I think as your soil and water district supervisor, we should make the more, uh, community more engaged and know what process that this board um, implements and also making people aware of the challenges that we're facing as a county and as a city. Um, another one would be our, like, uh, like my opponent said, our drinking water. Our drinking water for, that we normally drink, that meets federal regulations, but however, our rivers and streams, I'd like to get that uh, cleaned up. Thank you. Mr. Johnson. Yeah, the, the number one thing is our district employee. We're separate from the county government, and so we fund our own employee, and so the funding for that employee is our number one most important thing. Um, other challenges include getting the word out about our programs. Our programs are all voluntary conservation programs, and so people need to opt into doing those, and so those tend to be uh, really, really important for us. Um, I'd say the last one would be um, stabilizing our funding long-term. That's been a big focus of my the half of term I've been in there, and we've been able to stabilize funding, and I think that's one of the more important things we can do. Thank you. Mr. Hanks? Well, first and foremost, I would like everyone in Mecklenburg County to actually understand what soil and water is and what they do, because it is always at the end of the ballot. It's a bunch of names you've never heard of before. You have no idea what that office is. So I would like to get that out there. Second of all, our drinking water is the only commodity that really cannot be manufactured in China and sent over here. And it is vitally important that we do everything that we can to maintain safe, and clean drinking water for everyone. And it's, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Rudisell? Um, I don't believe that the Board of Soil and Water Conservation has um, a tremendous impact in many ways, but I do think they can um, add to the conservation of our drinking water. I think that's number one because we have so many people that depend on Catawba River. Education is a very important part of um, the job, um, I believe, in terms of um, the need to conserve in so many different ways that people now don't do. Um, and I think um, just um, natural resources in general, uh, landfills, I think all this is really part of it, um, including wildlife and preserves. Thank you. Mr. Erickson? Yes, I, I believe that um, education through um, community gatherings, uh, getting the the uh, community involved in what we do, and also just try to improve the quality of water because everybody needs safe drinking water, drinking water, bathing water, and, and so forth. Um, I think that is one of the most important things just to make sure the water is clean because we don't want to have another Flint, Michigan. So that's my biggest concern to have safe water for everyone in this county. And explain how these challenges affect the average Mecklenburg resident. And we will start with you, Mr. Johnson, with 30 seconds to respond. Yeah, and I want to be a little bit clear because Charlotte's drinking water is primarily run by Charlotte Water Services, and that's uh, fairly independent from us. Um, so the biggest thing we can do to impact people is encourage them to enact voluntary conservation on their property. Um, and this is why we send our employee out to public events. Uh, that employee is, is out there to make sure that we're recruiting people because we want people to install uh, these projects and we can share the cost of those projects with them. That's uh, maybe the number one thing I can do even sitting here today is to say, uh, feel free to come to us when you want projects done. Ms. Rudisell? Um, as Mr. Johnson mentioned, I think individual products of uh, to help conserve water um, are the major focus of the board. And I've seen examples of that, such as a rain garden I saw actually yesterday on a business property. Uh, it was a very interesting idea to conserve water from downspouts. Um, so, I mean, there's a great deal that can be done um, if we can educate people, I think, about possibilities of how they can conserve natural resources in all areas. Mr. Brown? 
As far as the education part, just to piggyback off what my opponent said, um, I believe more town halls, um, like he stated, they already go out to some public events, but I think partners, uh, partnerships with the Sierra Club, uh, Greenpeace and uh, Rivers Keeper, just to bring back more awareness throughout the community and how people can get involved and utilize these programs that the board offers. Mr. Erickson? Yes, I think um, implementing uh, programs, because you got a partnership with uh, other agencies that's already doing this, and, and establish a rapport, so make sure that these things are getting done, um, and increase the dialogue, um, and just bring it about community awareness, so we can all preserve this uh, this land. And Mr. Hanks. Well, Mr. Johnson brought up a very good point, and I'd kind of like to piggyback on that a little bit. You brought up water conservation, and I spend a lot of time traveling through neighborhoods throughout Mecklenburg County. I see sprinklers going while it's raining. I see sprinklers running in December with ice on the sidewalk. It's completely unnecessary, and we need to educate the people of Mecklenburg County when they should and should not be operating their sprinklers, that they should be putting conservation devices on their faucets and shower heads. For this next question, you'll each have 30 seconds to respond. The question is, Mecklenburg County has two very distinct constituencies, largely urban for the most part and rural on the fringes. Tell us about the issues facing each constituency and how the district is addressing them. And we'll start with you, Mr. Hanks. Well, I have a little bit of an advantage in dealing with people in the county. I happen to be a rural landowner myself. I own several dozen acres in a rural county, so I am well aware of what rural life is like, as well as Mrs. Root is still over here. So I can set up a very good rapport with farmers and landowners who live in the rural counties because I am pretty much one of them. And it's usually very difficult to reach a lot of these people. They don't want to deal with city folks. I believe that that's where I have a huge advantage with people in the country. Mr. Johnson? Yeah, this actually fits perfectly in with how soil and water works because we have two broad sets of programs. We have programs that are uh, set up almost exclusively to work with people in agriculture. We have programs exclusively to work with stormwater. Um, so we're in a perfect position to work both with farmers on state and federal projects, including those run by the NRCS and the State uh, Department of Agriculture, but also we get funding from the state for uh, stormwater projects within the city, um, and we get funding both from uh, the county and from the city to do projects uh, more locally as well. Ms. Rudisell? Um, I think that in the rural area, which I do have a great deal of experience with myself, um, having had a farm with horses and so forth, I think you have um, needs with, in terms of a removal of waste and making sure that it doesn't um, leach into the water system. And I think this is part of what soil and water has to work with. So that's a concern, um, and soil erosion and croplands. Uh, with the, the city people, I think it's more a matter of uh, stormwater drain off, and also a great deal of pesticides and um, other things that drain into the water system that um, need to be worked on. Mr. Erickson. Yes, uh, I too, I grew up on a farm, so I'm familiar with the rural areas of, of Mecklenburg County. Um, I, I would like to reach out to the folks that are in the rural areas. Um, that right there is uh, something that is, it needs to be trying to get a partnership and get people to understand and bring about awareness. And with the urban areas, it's a little different than the storm, um, the, the standing water in the backyards and so forth. And I, I'm also concerned about the, the mosquitoes and the Zika uh, virus. So uh, we want to try to make sure we build something so that water can run off freely into the streams. Mr. Brown. And I think Mecklenburg County being a both um, a large urban populace and then you having those rural pockets, it can be a challenge and, and it, like I said, it all goes back to awareness. We want to make sure that the people in the urban, um, the urban communities understand the programs that they have available to them, such as pet waste uh, recyclables and the people in the uh, ur uh, rural counties have uh, con water conservation where they're able to purchase uh, rain buckets and get reimbursed up to 75% of, uh, of those costs to help uh, water conservation throughout their projects and they can use that to you know, water their plants in their, their gardens. For this next question, you'll each have 30 seconds again to respond. The question is, what is the district doing to protect farmland from development and are the district's efforts sufficient? And we'll start with Mr. Brown. 
Can you repeat that question again? Absolutely. The question is, what is the district doing to protect farmland from development? And are the district's efforts sufficient? Well, that's a, that's a good question. And like I stated previously, with Mecklenburg being a large populace, um, we don't have really a lot of farmland. So making sure that we're trying to hold these developers, make sure they, they understand the, the cost of urban runoff that's going into our rivers and our streams and the, the pollutants and also with the, um, with the pesticides and whatnot that the, the farmers use. So it's kind of it's, it's, it's kind of a tough, tough question because we really don't have too much of a rural populace except in the nor uh, northern part of the county, so. Thank you. Mr. Erickson? Yes, uh, that is a good question. Um, Mecklenburg County does not have a lot of farmland agriculture, but you know, like, in, like my opponent said, in the northern part, um, as far as the, uh, the pesticides, and I know that's a concern as far as it running off into the streams. And I always wanted to, to make sure uh, we can reduce that, those harmful chemicals that ultimately ends up in our streams and lakes. Um, but the, the farmers, um, it's not that big here in Mecklenburg County. It's not, the agriculture's not that big here. Mr. Hanks. Well, we have a huge problem with soil erosion in Mecklenburg County and everywhere. In the south, our streams and creeks have silted in over the past 150 years considerably. This is why the Drowell Apartments used to flood every time we had a heavy rain. And what we need to do is to make sure that we keep as much soil out of the creeks and streams and lakes as we can and allow them to go back to their own natural courses. This may take another 150 years, but it is our job to make sure that we keep them clean. Mr. Johnson. Yeah, the district can hold conservation easements. Um, in this area, we've chosen not to because the Catawba Lands Conservancy and the Davidson Lands Conservancy seem to do a really good job of holding those conservation easements. Um, that said, the best way to keep farmers around is to make sure that farmers are profitable. And the easiest way to make prof farmers profitable is to help them with their soil quality through voluntary programs. Um, and as their soil becomes more profitable, um, or their soil becomes higher quality, they become more profitable, and they're less likely to sell it to developers in the long run. And Ms. Rudisell. As a native of this area, um, it's, it really sort of breaks my heart to see the changes that have come. And um, no, I do not think we have gone by far enough by in any manner uh, to conserve farms here in this county. And I do think that we do have groups that are working on con conservation easements. And I, I don't, I think we should choose to actually take that up with the board. Um, and I wish they would work harder on that issue. I think we need to work harder on it. I would love to see that happen. For this next question, we ask that you simply answer with a yes or no. The question is, since drought is becoming a problem for farmers, are you advocating rotation of crops? And we'll start with you, Ms. Rudisell. Rotation of crops. Well, I think Just I'll- Just say yes or no. Please. Oh, yes or no, okay, um, yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Hanks? Yes. Mr. Erickson? Yes. And Mr. Brown? Yes. It's time now for closing statements. Again, you will each have 30 seconds to make your closing statement. And we'll start with you, Mr. Brown. All right, and um, my name's Vonnie Brown. I'm running uh, for your next Soil and Water uh, Conservation District Supervisor. Um, I'm a local candidate. I was born and raised in North Carolina. I went to Mecklenburg, uh, no, graduated from um, North Mecklenburg High School. I uh, studied political science at uh, North Carolina Central. You can check out my website, vinybrown.com. It gives you a little bit more about myself and my platform. And I hope to get your uh, support this coming November. Thank you. Thank you. It's time now for your closing statement, Mr. Erickson. Thank you. Um, my name is Eric Erickson, like Dr. Eric Erickson, the famous psychology psychologist. Uh, I grew up on a farm. Um, I had a successful landscaping business. I, I have a degree from Appalachian State in uh, criminal justice and psychology, and I have a master's from Pfeiffer University uh, in organizational change management and leadership. I've been in public service for 20 years as a law enforcement officer. Um, I, I still want to transfer that same public service over to the board of Soil and Water Conservation District Supervisor. So I ask for your vote on November the 8th or October the 20th during early voting. Mr. Hanks. Well, once again, being a rural landowner, I believe that I can bring to this board the rapport 
that a lot of people from the city would not have with rural landowners and farmers. Again, 21 years as a private conservation officer, reintroducing the critically endangered Don Redwood to the Blue Ridge Mountains where it has not existed for approximately 30 million years. So I have over two decades in ecology and environmental concerns. So I hope you keep that in mind on Election Day. I would appreciate it very much. Mr. Johnson, your closing statement. The current board makeup is two people with technical expertise, two politicians, and one lawyer. Um, my concern about moving away from having two people of expertise, because I think most of the other people running are more interested in the politics, is that we lose some of that balance we have. Um, so I think I'm the strongest person to fill in from the technical side. I do active research in streams around here. I do active research on the soils around here. Um, and so while I think everyone that sits around me right now really cares a lot about the environment and would do a pretty decent job on the board, I think that I'm the strongest one uh, in terms of technical expertise to keep the balance uh, that it exists on the current board today. And Ms. Rudisell, your closing statement. Well, as a native charlatan um, and also a graduated magna cum laude from NC State University, I have a master's um, degree in theology, actually. Um, I've shown my um, interest in leadership through uh, membership with the Fox Hole Landfill Advisory Committee and um, Community Relations Committee. And I believe that though, I'm, and also I think I have a fundraising background um, and also education, um, having taught at Central Piedmont Community College. I think all these would come in uh, well with this, the work of this board. It may not be as technically skilled, but it would be a valuable help. And once again, thanks to Bonnie Brown, Eric Erickson, Doug Hanks, Brad Johnson, and Lisa Rudisell, all running in the race for Mecklenburg County Soil and Water Conservation District Supervisor. Again, in this race, you may only vote for one candidate. For more information about the League of Women Voters of Charlotte Mecklenburg, visit GoLeagueGo.org. For more information about your candidates, go to Vote411.org. For Mecklenburg County voters, early voting begins Thursday, October 20th. The general election is Tuesday, November 8th. Polls will be open from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. I'm Danielle Koser. Thanks for watching PBS Charlotte.